Good evening. We are so glad to have you here this evening, and we have an outstanding show prepared for you. Uh, we, we're going to be talking about dementia friendly. So everybody, I, again, as I say every show, I want you to go ahead and take, get pencil, paper, write down all this information. The people that are going to be presenting this evening, you're going to want to contact them because I know you're going to have questions. But we're going to start with our first guest. And our first guest is going to be Casey Acklin. He's the program coordinator in Dementia Friendly Nevada. Casey, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tom. It's such a pleasure to be here. We are so glad to have you. Now, I know that I've already introduced you and I've, I've let people know what your title is. But tell us, what is your role with Dementia Friendly Nevada? So I uh, have the immense privilege of serving as the program coordinator for a program at the University of Nevada, Reno, um, called the Dementia Engagement Education and Research Program, or more affectionately known as the DEER program uh, in the School of Community Health Sciences. And that is actually where, that is the institutional home base for the statewide Dementia Friendly Nevada initiative. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, well, I know during this presentation, you're gonna tell us what dementia is and the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's. Uh, many people are very, really confused in that area. So go ahead and just take it away and let us know the differences and what's going on with this information. Sure thing. So I just wanna start out um, at, the, uh, at the very basic level and talk about what, well, what is dementia? Um, dementia is actually not any particular disease. It's not a disease in and of itself. It's a collection of symptoms that can be brought about through a number of different causes. And Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of those symptoms, but there are many, many, many others, including frontotemporal dementia, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia. There are actually currently over 130 different identified forms of dementia. So 130 different causes of this set of symptoms we call dementia. And more and more scientists are realizing that the most common form of dementia is actually mixed dementia. So someone who's maybe living with Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia, for example. And, and I'll also just say that dementia is really far more common than many people, many people realize. One in 10 people over the age of 65 is living with dementia. One in two, so 50% of people over the age of 85 are living with dementia. And in Nevada, we have almost or over 50,000 people living with dementia here in our state. You know, that's something that I didn't know, and I, I'm sure most of the people watching the program this evening just did, we, we had not comprehended that information. So this is, this is invaluable for us to just to hear what you're saying and know that our neighbors, our friends, our family members could be suffering from dementia, and we just don't know it. That is very true. Uh, you know, I like to say it's not a matter of if you know someone living with dementia, it's who do you know who may be living with undiagnosed dementia? Okay, wow. Well, what are the warning signs of dementia? So when we think about, uh, when we think about early signs and symptoms of dementia, the one that comes to mind is memory loss. It's certainly the most popularized, most talked about um, symptom of dementia. We think about memory loss. But, um, and, and let me say that memory loss is uh, very normal. It's a very normal aspect of normal, uh, of normal aging. Um, it's normal for us to forget dates and names and even past events um, every now and again, but remember them later. Uh, with dementia, that memory loss starts to impact daily life. And it's, it's far more persistent than the memory changes that occur with normal aging. In the words of, of one person living with dementia who's part of the Dementia Friendly Nevada network, he likens it to someone telling you that the sun didn't come up this morning. So imagine if someone told you the sun didn't come up this morning. You know that it did, yeah. right? You may not have seen the sun come up, but you know it came up. For someone living with dementia, if you were to tell them, oh, you were there, or oh, you did this, to them, it's simply not true. It's not a matter of 
trying really hard to remember that event, it's that memory is, is absent. That absence is as true as the sun coming up this morning. But memory loss is not the only symptom of dementia. Dementia represents a really wide array of cognitive changes, vision changes, changes in planning and judgment, um, all change when someone develops dementia. And so actually the best definition of dementia that I have ever encountered and that I really actually like, I think it's applicable in all cases, is that dementia is a change in the way someone experiences the world. Now, we don't know exactly what that change is gonna be. It's gonna be different for everybody. We don't know how that person is going to interact with that change, the role it's gonna play in their life, but we do know that a change is going to occur. You know, when you first mentioned the memory loss and I was thinking, does that mean that I have dementia? But I'm, I'm so glad you clarified the fact that, you know, I'll, some of these things I'll remember later on. With dementia, it just doesn't happen. That, that's so true, Tom. Wow. Now, I know you have some things you'd like to share, uh, screen sharing, and, and let our audience know. Uh, when would you like to do that? Well, I am going to uh, save that for the end, Tom. Um, but at first, I'd love to, to talk about, you know, you brought up this really important um, concept of, of early signs and symptoms um, and thinking about, you know, early, the, the earliest um, days of dementia. Um, let's actually think about before that. Um, let's think about preventing or, or reducing risk of dementia. If, if I may go there. Go ahead. Yes. Awesome. So, I mean, so I... I think we can't talk about risk prevention enough because there are currently no curative treatments for dementia. There's no pill that someone can take that's gonna get rid of someone's dementia. So what we can talk about is reducing risk. Now, when we, when we have this conversation, I think it's important to understand that dementia is complex. Um, and it's, a, it's an interplay between genetic factors and environmental factors. So someone can be predisposed genetically to develop dementia and do nothing to prevent their dementia. However, they may, they may not end up developing dementia. Conversely, someone may live the healthiest life imaginable and have no genetic risk factors and may still develop dementia. Uh, it's, it's just a complex phenomenon, but there are ways to reduce one's risk. Um, and I wanna really focus on three, diet, exercise, and engagement. These we want to hear, and, and I want everybody to write these down because this is important. Go ahead, Casey. Yeah, and, and I, I agree, so important. Um, diet and exercise really sort of play a role together. Um, and together they are one of the, the best ways that we can reduce risk. And it starts to make sense, the connection between diet and exercise and dementia, when we think of how uh, blood dependent of an organ, the brain is. The brain really depends on our cardiovascular system. And there's actually a saying in the brain health, uh, in the brain health field that what's uh, good for your heart is good for your brain. So sticking to a healthy diet, staying physically active is not only good for your, for your whole body, um, but it's one of the best things that you can do uh, to reduce your risk of dementia. Now, maybe slightly less obvious is this concept of engagement, um, but it should not be underestimated because what we see time and time again um, in, in the field is that people living with dementia who disengage from the activities that, uh, and communities that matter to them experience a more rapid progression of their symptoms. Staying engaged is truly one of the best ways to, to, to make sure that uh, if you are living with dementia, that the, your progression is, is um, slowed and that you are living well with dementia. Engagement should not be underestimated. I work with people living with dementia across the state um, who are living well with dementia, living, who are thriving with dementia. And when I ask them their secret each and every time, it's that they stayed engaged in communities that are important to them. Okay. I think this is one of the most important takeaways. You know, in this information that you're providing in the overview of dementia, and I'm hoping everybody that's watching can understand that this is an overview and you're giving, you're giving specific information to 
to help people whether they have dementia or maybe dementia's in the future or dementia is a, a friend or a family and help us to understand what dementia is all about. This is this is crucial. Thank you. Absolutely, Tom. And if people want to learn more, there are, there are a variety of resources that are available for them. You, the, so nationally, there are there are many educational opportunities for people to connect more with this topic of dementia. But actually, many of the best of these educational opportunities come from right here in Nevada. We have some great partners that we work with across our state. Um, in terms of brain health, I can't recommend enough healthybrains.org. Healthybrains.org, it's a website maintained by Cleveland Clinic, Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health in Las Vegas. It has lots of information on how to keep your brain healthy and tools that you can use to, to help you get there, to help you maintain that brain health. Thinking more on the dementia side, the Alzheimer's Association has a ton of educational opportunities and programs. Definitely check them out. But from Dementia Friendly Nevada, we also have some educational opportunities. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. We have what's called a Dementia Friends Information Session once a month on the third Wednesday of each month. This is a one hour introduction to dementia. A little more detail than I'm given now. Um, covers the basics of dementia, differences between dementia and normal aging, um, and even has some activities to help community members understand what it may be like to live with dementia and how to best communicate effectively with someone living with dementia. Uh, we also have a program called Dementia Conversations. This is a chance for uh, community members to actually gather together with people living with dementia and family care partners to talk about living well with dementia and actually explore practical strategies um, to help get there, to help achieve that goal of living well. But those aren't the only resources. There are far too many for me to share here today. Um, but Dementia Friendly Nevada has curated a list of online programs and resources. They're all available um, to, to community members across our state. Um, on, on our website, I would definitely direct people to DementiaFriendlyNevada.org um, for information on all of these. Okay, Casey, look, this has been invaluable. I really appreciate all the information. I'm going to ask our audience to stand by for our next session. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. We're so glad to have you back with us. And I have another guest. This is a beautiful guest that's going to be sitting here and, and giving us a lot of information. This is Dr. Jennifer Carson. And she's going to be talking about living well with dementia during this session. So, Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. We are so glad to have you. We're excited because we're talking about a topic that so many people know a little about, but they don't know enough about to really, to really answer a lot of questions. And that's why we're so glad to have you on the show tonight. So, again, living well with dementia. Um, I've given your title. But what is your role and, and tell us uh, your connection with dementia? Sure. So, Tom, I am director of the statewide dementia friendly Nevada effort, which actually Excellent. has a, a home base at the University of Nevada in my research program in the School of Community Health Sciences. It's called the Dementia Engagement Education and Research Program. Wow. And uh, I've been working in the field of dementia support as a professional care partner for, I guess, a little over 30 years now. Uh, and Jennifer, so I hate to say you don't look that old. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, started, you, started when you, you started when you were one or two. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know, it was one of those situations, Tom. My mom was a, a nurse in a nursing home. Okay. Well, when I was growing up, and so I used to go to work with my mom as a volunteer um, ever since I was 12 years old. Okay. And I got my first job at 15 working in a nursing home, oh. and I have just never left. And uh, it's just been an incredibly rewarding career. I've worked in a variety of different settings. And then back in 2016, I became a family care partner. Um, two members of my immediate family are living with memory loss. Okay. Um, yeah, and so it, and that's been a really eye-opening experience 
um, to now really be able to see things from both a professional and family care partner perspective. It's very interesting when you say that because, you know, the people that are watching the show this evening, uh, it could impact them as well. And the information you're providing right now can definitely help so many people. Yeah, I, you know, that's why I'm grateful for the opportunity to come onto your show and to share a bit and to really help, I hope, destigmatize dementia, um, to let people know that they're not alone and that you can live well with dementia. Um, both of my family members, um, I can, um, honestly say are living very well with dementia and um, they are thriving with dementia and it's totally possible. It just really depends on the types of supports that are present in a person's life. Um, and, and so some of those supports come from family care partners and friends, um, but some of those supports are available within communities. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to explore some of that together. What are some of the challenges that, that uh, people might face? Some of the support systems, the family members, friends, neighbors, uh, what are some of the challenges not only the person with dementia would face, but other people as well? Uh, well, I think the first challenge is overcoming the stigma of dementia and asking for help. Um, to be able to say, um, I'm living with dementia and to, to ask the question, what kinds of supports and services are available in the community? Um, that's a really hard step for people to take. Dementia has been so stigmatized that people fear dementia more than death itself. Um, it, they've actually conducted research on this. Um, and a lot of that, um, very sadly, is due to a lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions about dementia, um, which really, I can honestly say, after having worked in the field for a very long time and um, after having conducted research in the field as well, um, a lot of those misconceptions and myths about dementia are tied to a biomedical only understanding of dementia that kind of views the person living with dementia and their lived experience through a, a lens of pathology. Um, and sometimes it fails to still see the human being behind the diagnosis. And so it's really important, I think, that we help dispel some of those myths and misconceptions. Um, people are so much more than their brains, <laughs> you know? As a human being, I am more, there's more to me than my cognitive ability. And, um, and sadly, I think there's a lot of energy going into fundraising campaigns for dementia, which is wonderful, that part's great, but in order to raise funds uh, to continue to do research in the field, oftentimes the image of dementia that we see portrayed in the media and through some of these mass fundraising campaigns um, is really a very stigmatized stereotype of dementia and not really reflective of the lived experience. You know, people are living with dementia, Tom, for upwards of 10 years, 15 years. I personally know people who've been living well with dementia for 20 years. And that stereotype of dementia, it, it, you know, it kind of does a disservice, honestly, um, to the abilities of people who have been diagnosed to then be able to reach out and to ask for help because they internalize the negative stigma and stereotypes of dementia. Um, and, and sadly, that limits then their own um, personal activities and the decisions that they make as they kind of, kind of stay in the closet about dementia. And so one of my roles is to help people come out of the closet of dementia and to let people know, first of all, it's an incredibly common experience. You know, one, one out of 10 people, Tom, over the age of 65 is living with dementia. Almost 50,000 people in the state of Nevada are living with dementia. But so many people feel stigmatized that they then kind of self-isolate and then fail to get connected with the supports and services that can really help them to live well. I was going to mention that because when you, when you look at the fact of, of what you're saying, 
if people recognize they have dementia and then look for assistance, they can live a much better life than denying the fact that they have dementia. Yes. When, when I first started with working with you and realizing, well, I had a cousin that denied that she had dementia and we had such a difficult time. Once I understood dementia, I could work with her then, even though she still denied it. But she could have been so much better if she had just admitted it, lived with it, and we could have gotten along so much better. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. I, one of them, as a family care partner, I felt so relieved and proud of my dad. So I have three dads. Um, and one of them has been diagnosed with vascular dementia, Alzheimer's. Um, this was back in 2016. And he had been showing symptoms, I, I think, for a couple of years before that. But we went ahead and got the diagnosis in 2016. It took my dad mm, almost two years to be able to make an adjustment to that diagnosis. It, it, it is a difficult diagnosis. Yes. But when I heard my dad first say, I have dementia to a group of his friends. It gave me so much hope because if people know that you're living with a cognitive disability, most people are good human beings and they want to help support you in continuing to stay engaged in your life. And so when my dad could finally admit to his friends, oh yeah, well, I have dementia. Um, I may, may need a little bit of help with that. Um, I just, as, a, as his daughter, I just felt a sense of relief, like, oh, okay, we're going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to be okay. My dad can admit this because that acceptance is a really important first step in getting the support that a person needs. And there are so many different supports that are available. You know, when you first mentioned living well with dementia and I hadn't thought about it before. It was just the fact that living with dementia is tough enough, but living well with dementia, that means that, look, it can't, it, it's not necessarily a, a death sentence. It, it, it's something that we can do. And some of, the, some of the people that we have on your committee that have dementia and talk about it and talk about some of the things they've gone through, you know, my heart just goes out to them. And I'd like to do more. I wish I could do more than, than just be part of it. But I look at what you've accomplished. I look at what you, Casey, Tanya, and everybody else on your committee have accomplished. And I'm just pleased to be just a part of your team. Well, we're excited to have you as part of our team, as a leader in your community, Tom. Um, we, we really want to work with individuals in all sectors of community to come together to have really meaningful conversations about what we can do together okay. to better support the experiences of people living with dementia in your community. Um, we, you know, our hope is to um, help people stay connected to opportunities for meaningful experiences in their community. And, uh, and I talked to different people living with dementia and research about what those experiences are that we can help people to stay connected to um, so that they can live well with dementia. And Tom, if you don't mind, if I just share an image, I, I just want to show people. Go right this, ahead. This is a response from people who are living with dementia who said, look, folks, yes, I'm living with a progressive brain condition. But as long as I have opportunities to stay connected to these meaningful experiences on a regular basis, I can live well. Opportunities to be me, opportunities to be with, either with, with friends, neighbors, nature, for many, God, you know, religion. Opportunities to seek freedom, to get out of restrictive environments and restrictive relationships. Opportunities to find balance in my life opportunities to contribute and to make a difference, opportunities to continue to grow and develop because my life is not over, and finally, opportunities to have fun. And so as long as we can help people stay engaged to these meaningful experiences, Tom, people can live well with dementia. 
living well with dementia. This is just fantastic. And, and Jennifer, I am just so thankful that you are leading this team. Uh, your passion comes out. And I think everybody that's watching this program can now say, look, we can do this. So come back and join us for our next session. I sure will. Welcome back. We're so glad to have you back with us. And we're now going into our, our session three. And again, we still have Dr. Jennifer Carson. Uh, she's with us and um, she's gonna be talking about the dementia friendly movement in America, Nevada yeah. and Pahrump. So when we say <laughs> Nevada and Pahrump, don't forget we also look at Clark County and Nye County. And so we're looking at a large area, but there are a lot of people here in Pahrump and we want them to definitely know that we have dementia friendly Pahrump. So, uh, Jennifer, tell, tell us more. Uh, again, your role in this area, I know you said it in the last uh, segment, but go ahead and repeat it again. I think a lot of people need to know how important you are to this program. Oh, thank you. Um, it's actually an, an honor for me to be able to work with communities in my role. Um, and so I'm on faculty at the University of Nevada, Reno where I have a, a program called the Dementia Engagement Education and Research Program. And we are the very proud home base of the highly collaborative um, and very successful dementia-friendly Nevada effort. And where I have the honor of working with communities across the state of Nevada and really trying to build a culture of inclusion and well-being for people living with dementia and family care partners. I've been in the field about 30 years and I am also a family care partner. Um, two members of my immediate family are also living with dementia. Okay. Now, with everything that, that, that we talked about in the last session, I know that when you talk about supporting dementia and some of the other things that are going on, the movement that's taking place across America right now, tell us more about that. Well, so a lot of people are familiar with the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. And thankfully, over the last several decades, communities have really embraced the ADA to ensure accessible communities for people who are living with physical disability. And that's awesome. I applaud that effort. But there are other types of disabilities that that Americans live, live with. And one very common disability is a cognitive disability. And so just as we build ramps in our communities and accommodations for people who are living with physical disabilities, the dementia friendly and inclusive movement across our country, state and Pahrump, we're working together to figure out how to build those cognitive ramps for community members, cognitive ramps. How do we help support our family members, our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues, and other citizens in being able to navigate and stay included in our communities when they're living with a cognitive disability? And one of the ways that we can really help build those cognitive ramps is to ensure that community members understand a little something about dementia. Um, and, and another big part of, of really creating those inclusive communities for people living with dementia is breaking the stigma of dementia um, so that people who are living with dementia and family care partners feel welcomed and supported by their communities. And so that's kind of the essence of the dementia friendly and inclusive movement in our country and so there is an organization called Dementia Friendly America. And, um, and Dementia Friendly America helps provide resources, yeah, for communities that are interested in becoming more dementia friendly and inclusive. So back in 2016, the Nevada Aging and Disability Services Division, more affectionately known as ADSD, um, received a grant from the Administration for Community Living to launch the statewide dementia friendly Nevada effort. And so I was really um, grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this movement in Nevada from the very beginning. And our, our aim is to really support the inclusion of people who are living with dementia. And so our, our mission statement in order to do that 
Um, we want to provide education so that all community members know how to support the inclusion of people living with dementia and family care partners. Um, there are four things that we really focus on ensuring that communities are respectful, that they are educated, that they're supportive, and then ultimately inclusive of people who are living with dementia and family care partners. You know, when, we, when you first started uh, explaining exactly what you're talking about, the movement across America, uh, I was gonna ask, how are you really getting this information to the community? But I think you explained it, you explained it quite well in the fact that you have Dementia Friendly America and then the Dementia Friendly Nevada and we have Dementia Friendly Pahrump and I'm sure they have maybe Las Vegas as well. Uh, we, we, I know we have some viewers that are in Las Vegas and they'd like to set things up like that. So I, I know we're going to have your phone number and if people want to call you and ask questions, well, Dr. Jennifer, I want to I want to set this up. I, I, I need to know more about dementia and how to get it across my community. Who do I contact? What do I do? How do I do it? So well, I, me, yeah. I'm gonna get some phone calls. Let me let me advance this list of slides from our last segment about living yeah. well. Let me put up the next slide here that has our contact information, Tom. Oh, great. So, okay. so we believe a dementia-friendly Nevada that people can live well with dementia as long as their communities are supportive and inclusive, and as long as people have opportunities for meaning, purpose, and, and growth. Um, people living with dementia do have a future. People who are living with dementia are often living with it more like a chronic condition, and they're living with it for a long time. Um, and part of that, that success in terms of longevity and living well is continuing to stay engaged in your community, to not succumb to the tragedy narrative of dementia, but instead to understand that your ability to live well with dementia um, is kind of tied to your willingness and, and, and efforts to continue to stay engaged in your life and, and in your community. So Dementia Friendly Nevada is working with six different communities around the state right now. We'd love to work with, with more communities. Um, we have De Dementia Friendly Pahrump, yay, um, which is co-facilitated by myself and your next guest, the amazing Tanya Brum. Uh, I'm just a big fan of Tanya's. She's an incredible community champion. And um, we have Dementia Friendly Southern Nevada Urban, which is basically Clark County. Dementia-friendly Washoe County, Elko County, age and dementia-friendly Winnemucca. So they built their dementia-friendly movement on a foundation of an age-friendly movement that was already happening in Winnemucca. And then really exciting, our first tribe in Nevada has joined the dementia-friendly Nevada effort. That was back in 2018. The Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe launched a community group as part of dementia-friendly Nevada called Pija Tsunami. And in each one of these communities, what we do is work collaboratively to identify strengths and gaps within the community and then to develop some goals and activities together, um, goals and activities that we believe can really help transform the culture of dementia and dementia care and support within the community. Um, and, and so it's really community driven change. We learn a lot from each other. Um, people who are living with dementia and family care partners are invited to join each of these community groups to be a part of the solution. And um, we're really committed to a nothing about us without us approach in all aspects of community transformation. So this isn't making change benevolently and paternalistically on behalf of people living with dementia. This is creating changes in partnership with people who are living with dementia in these communities. And in addition, the other folks who we have at the table represent all different sectors of community. That's, that's what makes this so special. This is not just an aging services initiative. These are community initiatives. And so we need all different aspects of community to be represented at the table, transportation, libraries, law enforcement, first responders, 
education, retailers, you know, think about when people are going to the grocery store to a restaurant, what can that store or that restaurant do to be able to support their customers who are living with dementia? So we need people from all different sectors at the table so that we can work together to identify different solutions and supports for people who are living with dementia. Um, if people want to get engaged with us, we would love to have you at the table. Right now, it's a virtual table until the COVID pandemic subsides a bit more. Um, but pretty soon, we will return to our in-person monthly meetings in Pahrump for information about how to become a member. And by, everyone is invited to become a member. And you can call this number, 775-682-9444. Four, four. Um, that is, uh, it'll go to voicemail, but know that if you leave a message, those voicemail messages come directly to me in my email, because we're all still working remotely. We will definitely respond to your call, but you can also log on to our website, DementiaFriendlyNevada.org. Um, you can send us a message through that website, letting us know of your interest. We'd be happy to contact you. We want you at the table. Mm -hmm. Now, this is fantastic. You know, and listening to you, uh, this could do away with all the stigma of uh, negative stigma of dementia. If everybody is involved and everybody understands that we're supporting, we're supporting people with dementia, we're supporting caregivers, and we're supporting each other. This is fantastic. You're so right, Tom. You know, our monthly meetings for Dementia Friendly Pahrump are really a microcosm of the ideal community that we want to see flourishing across Nye County. Everyone is at the table. It is a, a culture of equity and inclusion. Um, just beautiful. Um, I, and we do a lot of different fun events. This is a photo I just wanted to share with everyone. A dementia friendly Pahrump is doing a, has a variety of goals and activities underway to really help um, strengthen uh, dementia inclusion across Nye County. This is a photo from one of our film events. So Dementia Friendly Nevada, um, Dementia Friendly Pahrump does a lot of um, using film to provide education. And this is a photo of um, a, a retired Senator Valerie Weiner here introducing the Nevada State Plan for Alzheimer's just to set the stage for the film that we then watched, um, which was a really great research-based drama about dementia. And you can see Jennifer, that, here. That, is, that is fantastic. And now we got to go into our next session, but we want you to be, come back and join us. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, sorry, I uh, didn't have my um, timer set on that one. <laughs> Welcome back. We're so glad to have you back with us. And now I have an in station, <laughs> in the studio guest, and this is Tanya Brom. Now, Tanya, yeah. let, let me just say that she's the expert on local dementia care, support, and education resources. And she's going to give us a lot of information about what's going on. So, Tanya, Welcome to the show. Hi, Tom. It's good to be here. I, I haven't am so seen glad you in a day or two. <laughs> I am so glad to have you here and uh, Thank you. be able to sit down and yeah. uh, and go over all of this information. Now, we've had Casey and we had mm -hmm. Jennifer talk about a lot of things that they were going through. They gave an overview of dementia. They, yep. They've given a lot of information. But you have so much information to share with our, with our viewing audience. Our locals, well, our whole goal is making sure that there's things are available to our local community, and that's what I do through RSVP. I'm the field representative for Pahrump for the Retired Senior Volunteer Program, okay. and in that job, Dementia Friends is part of my responsibility. And, and actually, I was doing Dementia Friends before I was with um, RSVP okay. because I feel so strongly about it. Oh, great. Um, it, it's important. And RSVP provides a lot of in-home care, like respite, which is for a caregiver. And anybody who's taken care of someone with dementia, they need breaks. Right. So we provide respite care so that they can call us and we, we set up an, an appointment and we get them signed up. 
and we can have someone to give the caregiver a break, the care partner a break. We have something that's fun that um, we had up on the screen and we'll probably put on the screen later, is getting, staying engaged. That How many times did Casey and Jen say, yes. stay engaged? It's definitely stay engaged. Stay engaged. So we w have been able to start up Friends Day Out again, okay. and that's part of RSVP, and it's called the Java, uh, the Java Music Club, and it's a way for care, normally caregiver, care partners can take a break and leave their, um, their loved one with us, and it's singing and talking and sharing and sharing about the week and sharing memories or things, okay. things that are important to them. And but it turned out that the care, care partners end up staying because it's so much fun. Okay. But it's singing in these instruments, and it's every Thursday at Nye Communities Coalition. It starts at 11:30. We suggest now that you bring your lunch, uh, so that we can we, they can sit and eat and talk and, and play. Okay. And it's from 11:30 until 11 1:32 o'clock, and it's just a fun way. It's room 29. Call me to so uh, we don't ever want to be overcrowded at this stage because we, we are under the mandates. So 702-845-4748. And there's and if you need any help, that RSVP, transportation, respite, homemaking, companion, call 702-845-4748. Other things available here in town, the Alzheimer's Association is under the CDC lockdown. So they're not allowed to meet in person. Okay. But Barbara Payne is the facilitator for the uh, Alzheimer's support group. And uh, she, her, well, she said to, for anybody who needs some help, and she's been doing this since the whole pandemic started, call her, and I have to look at the paper, 775-537-2082. That's Barbara Payne, Alzheimer's support Alzheimer's Association support group for Pahrump and call her and leave a message and she will call you back as soon as possible. Tanya, why don't you give that number one more time? It's seven, seven my memory is really good. <laughs> seven seven five five three seven two zero eight two. And that's Barbara Payne. And she okay. will she's been wonderful through this entire pandemic. Le reaching out a hand to anybody new in town, and I've sent a bunch of people her way because everything was in lockdown and they couldn't meet anymore. Okay. So she's handling that. I called the Cleveland Clinic yesterday to kind of get some ideas of what people should do um, if they have a feeling that they have a loved one that's something is not right. And I talked to Kate, and Kate told Inglesby, and she told me that first they have to be assessed by their, just their normal doctor, just your normal, and every month, every year, every senior is supposed to be given a cognitive uh, assessment. Okay. That's part and parcel with your, med your medical care that they're all supposed to get. If the doctor says that there is an issue, she, I feel very, very strongly about that. Request the referral to the Cleveland Clinic uh, for help okay. with specific help with Alzheimer's because that's what they specialize in. That's what they do. And that gives you an opportunity to have the best care available sooner. Sooner is better than later. Do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes. And that's. So the minute you kind of have a feeling something's not right, the other thing is when you're talking to your loved one, don't use the word, we're going to have you tested. Don't use that. That's <laughs> frightening. Yes. Uh, I saw the results of somebody doing that, and it wasn't deliberate it, they, because she felt, she took it personally that she failed a test. Well, you can't fail a test. You can't fail an assessment. So just get that assessment and then contact the, and let your doctor know that you specifically want the Cleveland Clinic because that's, it's the best in the country. And we have it, Nevada okay. has it. So, and they have, you can learn more about what they have available at my.clevelandclinic.org slash location slash Nevada slash news dash event. 
and that will get, or just go to clevelandclinic.org and you, you'll probably get the information. They also have support with 24 hours, and their number is 702 483 6000. So if they go to clevelandclinic.org, they're going to get all of that. And then he'll have all of yes. that. And those are, those are the, what we have locally. And just because we live in Pahrump doesn't mean that we don't have that available to us. These things are all the Alzheimer's Association. Plus, I have in my library at the office, I have all kinds of information. It's a lending library. I have books that I actually give away. So you can come in and call me, and I, we can go over what I have there that you may want to take. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, wonderful information. Movies, some of those movies that we all cry at, I got them too. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you know, Tanya, when we talk about all the fact that you're talking about people with dementia, mm -hmm. and you're talking about all the things that they can do to stay involved and, and stay healthy, but you got the caregivers who yes. also have to stay healthy. And that's where RSVP comes in. And I know you mentioned that earlier, but it's just so important that caregivers remember, you need to take care of yourselves too. It, it's critically important because the last thing, it's not uncommon for caregivers to end up in the hospital Absolutely. from being worn out. And, and that's why we have the respite program and it's so important. Plus, once the world breaks open again, we'll be doing caregiver, caretaker trainings to help caregivers um, work through the issues. It gives them an, and with RSVP, when I'm involved, I can even provide the respite care person to stay with their loved one okay. while they're taking the classes. And it is important It's um, for them to make sure they're watching out for themselves. It's better than ending up in the hospital. Now, you said earlier, don't tell people they're going to be tested. You don't use the word tested. What would you say instead? Um, let's look and see what's going on. Okay. Let's let you, does it, it's, it's an assessment, uh, which is non-judgmental. Testing is judgmental. Yes. You can pass and fail a test. You can't pass or fail an assessment. Okay. And that's why, and I didn't, I never even thought of that until very, very recently when I saw a reaction to failing a test. Well, don't use the word test because you can't fail. So, and it's good for, and it's, it's a good way, the sooner the, the, sooner the better, um, because you want to get be proactive for help, and that's the best way to be proactive. Oh, absolutely. You know, we talk about, we're, we're talking about locally, mm -hmm. and when we talk about dementia-friendly Pahrump, and talk about all the things that it impacts, all the people that are that are living with dementia, you know, in the other sessions, it talked about the people that are living with dementia, the people that deny that they have dementia. Yep. And then you have the caregivers that are trying to work with the people with dementia. Yeah. So there's so much information out there, and you're providing so much. So I'm hoping that everybody watching this show tonight will be writing it down, saying, I need to follow up on this or that. Mm -hmm. And... Give us more information on who they can contact. And if they, if they have questions or suggestions, call me. Okay. 702-845-4748. Call Barbara Payne if you need support at 775-537-2082. Or call the Cleveland Clinic at 702-483-6000. And this is, this is the way you'll get the information. The other goal of Dementia Friendly Pahrump specific is getting to the supermarkets, getting to, um, to the fire department, to the police department, and explaining and have them join our, our goal, have them join our, have them join our party, because we have fun. And, well, it's, it, and it's a great way for them to understand why it's important for all the different components in our community to be knowledgeable on Alzheimer's and dementia. Wow. Uh, for everybody, and, and I, I like the fact that Tanya said, you know, the, the fire department, the sheriff, all of these are, these are people I know that are friends, and mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that they get invitations to join us and make sure that 
I know already they understand uh, what dementia is all about. They understand that if they, if, they, uh, if they meet someone with dementia, how to handle that person, whether it's in a fire or whether it's in a police yeah. situation. Or some kind of, med even in a medical emergency, yes. the, the, a, a patient with dementia is not always going to respond the way you expect them to. Absolutely. And so it's, it is, it's critically important to, it's okay to not be like everyone else. And it is so important. So with that in mind, I just want to say, Tanya, thank you for being here this evening. I also want to thank Casey and Jennifer uh, for all the information yeah. they provided. You guys do so much for our community. You are, you're in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you keep it together for us. But, so I know when I have questions, I'm going to call you. But yeah. we want you to remember all of this and come back and join us for our next show. Thank you. Thank you.